Greetings, Casper, all the way from Queensland, Australia. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Peter. How are you doing? Very good. It's actually your morning, I should clarify. But uh, today you're speaking with Peter from Walkton Entertainment. Look, you really don't need any sort of introduction. Everybody knows who you are. You've got a great range of films. Some of them are presented behind me this evening. You're also a producer and you're also dabbling into a bit of a, a directional. Uh, you've done some directing back in the day as well, which is very, very exciting. But this evening, your morning, we're here to talk about a little film called Daughter, uh, which I've got to be really upfront with you. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Um, it has been released here in Australia and New Zealand on digital platforms as of this week. So we're kind of celebrating here in Australia for you. And uh, not only did I like this film, but according to Rotten Tomatoes, it's currently sitting at 93%. That's pretty which amazing. Is, which is amazing. That's and huge. surely that pleases the father, right? That does. Father is pleased. Father does does love, love that. Tremendous. And I wanted to break the ice. I want to get to know you better. People of Australia want to get to know you better. So I want to ask a question to get to know you better. Do you love unsettling films? And if you do, do you have a favorite out of curiosity? Wow. Um, I do love unsettling films, but I love them for different reasons and different different things. I mean, I, I love all films, but I mean, I, I loved uh, True Romance. Uh, is uh, It's disturbing in many ways. I mean, if you look at the scene of James, James Gandolfini and, and Patricia Arquette, it's it's brutal. Yeah. And, and she's amazing. And he's amazing. The whole film is an amazing film uh, written by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I, I love all these kinds of different films i i've just been lucky lately the films i've been able to get have been pretty they're little ones but they're you know a lot of heart daughter's got a lot of heart it's a different kind of film i'm in a movie called mad heidi which is a swiss exploitation film where they they did tributes to starship troopers about it but it's like a grindhouse film like a robert rodriguez or quentin tarantino film so yeah. it's just blood splatter and i play the the dictator slash president of uh switzerland is the cheesiest film you'll ever see and then also i'm in a a couple cowboy movies. I'm in one called uh, uh, Counting Line No Fear with Tom Wompat, Bo Duke, yep. right now. And then another one, Yaya Gosling and Edward Furlong called Heart of a Champion. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yaya was in with Robert Rodriguez movie, a Heroes. Yep. That, so, you know, there's just a whole bunch I have coming out. Battle for Saipan is out. And then I also yep. have uh, um, Tom, uh, Tom DeLong's uh, Monsters of California coming out soon, which he's the, the singer from Blink-182. So I have, That's but cool. I did all these movies the last four years they're just all coming out right now so yeah it's it's really tremendous it actually feels like we're getting a film from you every month in fact i think this month we had two from you uh a daughter obviously being the more popular one within the market at the moment and you know i look at the range of films that you've done and you have done a wide range of films you know you've got starship you know troopers behind me sleepy hollow a few to name and i kind of look at this film and i kind of wondered what attracted you to play this character and, and maybe if there was any inspiration behind it as well for daughter Okay, absolutely. When uh when I was first sent the script, my 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 manager didn't think I'd want to do it because I I'm a father of of daughters and uh but my agent loved it. And then I read it, I'm like, I'm in. And then my manager was like, I just don't get it. I don't know. He's like, but he didn't think I'd want to do it because of that. But he now says oh, I was wrong. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, my daughter even came to the premiere with me, so it was amazing. So uh, <laughs> it, but it's, it is a disturbing film. Yeah. My my prep for it was I had a beard so i asked the director if i could keep it and then i had i parted my hair down the middle i said is this okay he goes yes and i would drive to work like that and as i was leaving my wife and daughter were all like why the hair change it i'm like that's my character and they're like well just don't do it here and i drive to work and then i'd work all day and then i drive back and they're like oh my god you're their hair and yeah, they put to a beanie on it but I, I i all i did was part it down the middle and then i did the research on what he wrote mm -hmm. and Corey wrote such a great script that it yes. puts the hairs up on the back of your neck when you're reading it. Yep. And then I think he really was able to really get that on, on film. I agree with you hundred percent. And what was the biggest challenge doing this film overall? What was the biggest hurdle you had to take on? Well, amazingly it's me talking. So it's always me having to talk, you know, it's, <laughs> I, my character does a lot of talking. Now that can be boring if I don't, you know, if I didn't really know what I was saying. So yeah. I did the research on what I had to do. I was Googling where these quotes were coming from and I was asking him and I just was, I wanted to make sure that I believed everything and that I was doing and saying, and that I believed there was a, per I really believed in the purpose for it. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. And I had to do that. And, and so I, that's, that's the research I did in that. 
Beautiful. And look, I have actually uh, spoke with Corey the other day and we talked about the visuals of this film, which is also like your character, very different, you know, something we don't see every day. And he did go in depth about how obviously they use 16 mil film and he spoke very briefly about having to do long takes. And I was sort of curious to know, you know, how did you find having to do long takes and really remember every bit of movement and dialogue? How did you find that that pressure on set? Well, we're doing it on film. So on film, you don't have times to just like, oh, let's just take it up again and everything like that because it just ruins takes and becomes expensive. And it still is. So uh, we even had one scene where we shot where I'm preaching and it's a long scene. It's like a four page scene, three and three quarters. Um, and it's just me talking. And then Ian says one thing and then I give him a look and a question. And then it goes back to me talking. So we filmed that, and then four days later, I'm I'm there for another thing, and I'm about ready to shoot. And Corey goes, oh, "Casper, uh, remember that scene?" And I go, "Yeah." And he goes, "Well, the magazine was not good." Oops. I go, I "Go, oh." And he goes, "So we have to reshoot it." I go, "When?" And he goes, "Right now." And that's just as I showed up on set, and I was like, "No!" It's like, "Cause we got to switch this other one." So I had to go quickly learn the dialogue again, because you know you throw it out, but mm -hmm. I had to do that. And it's interesting because, you know, he would do these long takes and sometimes, you know, I'm so used to now movies where they're so quick paced. And if you're, if you're not quick paced, you know, it's boring and you get on. So sometimes in this film, I would think maybe this is going to be too long, but he had just an interesting thing where he would do a slight movement or something off like this. And it just, just enough. And then I, if I thought it was going to be too long, then all of a sudden I was like, oh, no, you know, so like there was moments that just brought these, um, just like uncomfortable things that I just thought were such brilliant um, pieces to the puzzle. The character, the character of the the long takes were were like a character. It's a great way to put it. It's a great way to describe it. Um, and also, it's just great shots, all on sixteen millimeter. You yeah. know, all these gritty, like seventies, eighties, but also then present day. I mean, it's just the the everything was just so different and odd and weird and and that kept my attention i've watched it twice and and i've actually thought it was it's it, he's he did a great job and the other actors are amazing they're so oh. talented look we could be here all day talking about the other actors as well because they have done as again i said to Corey, they have done such a tremendous job like yourself in this film everyone's just done such a wonderful job and you did mention very briefly about how Corey was capable of making a film that makes the the hair stand up on the back of your neck and the opening shot of this film freaked me out on the first watch because it says this film's based more on fact than it is fiction. And I sort of sat there going, oh, I'm just going to squeeze my armchair a little tighter now. And you already mentioned very briefly, you know, you are a father in real life. You are a family man. And I was sort of curious to know how did this film impact you, you know, when you're sort of aware that, you know, in the world somewhere this has occurred and, you know, and things like that. And obviously being a father to a daughter, you know, did that sort of impact you greatly while making the film? You know, it's it 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 it's amazing. When when I read the script, as much as you see that on, on when you see that saying this based more on fact than yeah. fiction, I read it and my hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Now I've seen other movies that say that, and usually I'm like, ah, whatever. You know, it's a, it doesn't have a payoff in this. But this one, you start watching it, and when you see things that happen, you go. I've read too many stories about things like this have happened, haven't happened. So, and then you have to think about what goes on in the household of what these people do. And usually it is like uh, religious zealots and psychopaths that uh, have gotten to the place. Oops, sorry, that's my life. I, I'll just put that back on. I just knocked it off with my foot. There so we go. Good. Um, my, uh, my, you know, I, I, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. We're, we're, uh, you know, yeah, the religious zealots. So you, you, you think about that and you go, okay, I, I've got to play this person. I've got to know my dialogue, believe it, preach it, and do all that. But being a father, um, I think it helps me. It helps too in this. I mean, I've been a father. So we all go, you know, anybody who's a father knows they, they've gone through, they go through different things. Your kids grow up. My kids are all older now. They're all on their own. They're all adults. Yep. So um, as it should be when they, when they get to that age. Yeah. And they're living their life. And that's what this father wants to do. But his mm -hmm. is a little bit warped. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it, we, all, we want to lead our kids in the best way we can. And I think he wants to too. So that's what father's trying to do. Yeah, 100% agree with you. And on a, on a lighter note, uh, do you have a favorite moment that may have occurred while making the film? Just something that really stayed with you in your heart. Something that was just a beautiful moment 
while making something maybe behind the scenes that viewers weren't aware of uh well we had a fire come out yeah. uh, uh we had a brush fire come out and we were shut down for like a week yeah and we had to come back and we thought it was going to be gone but as i was leaving they got me out of there and i'm leaving and i'm like you can either go right or left and i go left because that's the fastest way home yeah but i go i go 28 minutes into it and then the fire's there and I can't, I have to turn all the way back. And I'm trying to contact all of them to let them know, go right, go right. Cause I was the first one to leave yep. because if they had gone left. I didn't want to even get caught in the fire and it was getting yep. worse and worse and worse. And then I got on there. But uh, uh, my favorite thing was is that they were a family and they were all cared, cared about each other. And they're all doing this. They were a family before I was even on there, but they welcomed yeah. me in. Uh, and they, they, they went and had vegan snacks because I'm a vegan. They were, but some of them were vegan too. So just yeah. everything, was great. it was just, you know, it's nice. It's amazing. Cause I'm looking at this set primarily, you know, 60%, uh, Asian, 60% people of color, 60% yeah. women, over 60% women. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm the crazy white guy, old white <laughs> guy. And I play yeah. the crazy old white guy. And I think that was deliberate as well and i think it was pretty uh spot on in its intentionality for 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 the fears that that people of uh color have to to deal with sometimes with people yeah. who get in their head like this person this crazy white guy yeah like in there i think that was uh i think that was also something that to, to make you feel a little uncomfortable too yeah so. and and one thing um, Corey did mention, he did speak briefly about that fire, and I couldn't believe it, my jaw dropped. But he did actually say, too, that you're always very positive. And he said you were kind of the guy that was giving, you know, a bit of an uplifting spirit to everyone, telling the odd joke here and there and being very bubbly. And I can kind of see that with you this evening. So I thought that was really nice touch that Corey said that about you, um, which I thought was just lovely to hear. But also I wanted to know on your end, what was it like working with Corey, the director of this film? All right. Well, I have two things I want to talk to you about. So we'll go back to the Corey thing about what it's like to direct this. But when you, you, you say how I, I was on set, I think that you could play this character and you could stay in character. Like I might have parted my hair and beard and everything like that. And I might have looked like this the whole time. And it might have been creepy and weird looking. But but this is a, an intense subject matter. And especially yes. when you're dealing with people of color and, and everything like that, the subject matter, especially when you have somebody who's not going to be, I, I was going to be completely intense in the scenes. I was going to be completely present and wanted to be this character. But right. afterwards, when we're not rolling. I don't want them to feel that uncomfortable from me because I'm, I'm not, I'm not that father. I'm, I'm a different father. I actually yeah. do care. I care about the kids. I cared about all these people and they became my family. So that was, Beautiful. you know, it was, it was easy to do that, uh, mm -hmm. to, to step in and out of it. But it was also, the dialogue and the, that I had so much dialogue and I had to do that. I had to go study. So, so I, uh, I had times where I was to myself, which gave them their moments too. So in a way, I think there was a natural way that kept it as it was, but everybody, you know, they were very welcoming on set to me. And I was very, I wanted them to feel comfortable as a human being. Yeah. I wanted their characters to feel as uncomfortable as fuck, <laughs> but, uh, but I wanted them to feel, uh, I wanted them as people, as humans, fellow yes. humans to be comfortable. Corey, an intense director. Right. He is so wild. So reading the script, I was like, this is amazing. I want to do it. I got to be in. And then I had to talk to this director. And then I had to talk to him about where do you get this? And I'd ask him about quotes. And I'd Google up this. And I'd go, so this is from this. Where is this from? So I'd ask him different questions. And I'd ask him a question. I'd go, how about in this scene we do this? And he'd come back and he'd go, let me think about that, Casper. Mm. And then he'd go off and he'd go do some work and I'd watch and he'd look over at me and come back. And about 15 minutes later, he'd come back with an answer. Why it would work, why it wouldn't work or what it was. But it was always so insightful, very thought provoking. Very cool. And I thought, wow, he's he's intense. He's a very yeah. intense one. And, his, and when he would do these long takes and just sit in this like this, I would, I would sit there and I'd, I'd watch him and I'd see what he was doing and, I, and I'd, I'd get ready and prepare because you have to do the rehearsal before and we're doing film because you don't can't do many takes, one or two takes. That's all we'd get. Yeah. So I had to be spot on. And yeah. then he took all that dialogue that he had and he just put, when I was on camera, now it's, sometimes it's just my dialogue in the background, but that was all on camera too. So I was on camera for that dialogue. So that's intense. It sounds very intense, but I love that kind of that aspect we didn't get to hear from Corey the other day, which is very cool. And as we come to a bit of a summary and close, I've got two more questions for you. 
in you know in australia right now we've got a lot of people trying to get into the game trying to be you know they want to be an actor and you know what advice would you like to give them to the people that are trying to get their first step into becoming an actor what advice could you give them all right well i would always say that it make sure it's it's what you want to do because this business is uh this is a business of uh no's um and yeah. and, and 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 people telling you no and saying all this but it's also a business that that's amazing and i i love it it's been very good to me and as far as i i as acting goes make sure it is something you want to do um and then i would study i would read books i would watch movies i would watch interviews about movies i would watch about uh, other actors processes and i would watch directors and watch their processes and and read books on how films are being made and depending on what you want to do if it's film tv theater you know there's all the different there's all the different things musicals everything there's different aspects to it but no matter what you do i would study it all and learn exactly what it is you want to do and then keep studying keep watching i watch movies all the time because that's my business that's what i love so i'm watching them all the time and then i love talking about them and i love talking to other movie people and then i love being on set and i say the best thing you can do as an actor do all the studying you can, get everything you can, and then try to get on sets, PAs, whatever else you can do. Just try to get on sets and see because it's a, different, it's a different beast. Yeah, that's very good. And that's a good thing you mentioned too, getting your foot through the door just by being a PA or just doing whatever you can. Absolutely love it. And yeah, uh, I, was an extra, I was an extra on Saved by the Bell when I first started. So people can I didn't take know that. whatever they want, you know, but, but uh, you do, do whatever you can to, to get in the business and, and, and you just, you, you just, I did commercials. I did, you know, whatever. I was lucky. I did my first audition. It was a Midway Airlines commercial. Midway <laughs> Airlines went to punk right afterwards, but I got in the union because of that. Because of that uh, uh, commercial. There you um, go. You can never doubt. Hard. You can never doubt your opportunity, can you? You never can. No. It's tremendous. And as I already mentioned at the start of this interview, you know, Daughter is already out on digital here in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, people can rent this over the weekend. They should. I highly recommend it. But as we come to a bit of a close, I just wanted to give you the floor, maybe about 30 seconds if you can do it. You know, basically this is your opportunity to tell the people of Australia watching this, listening to this, why should they rent or buy or watch Daughter? What is your opinion on that matter? Well, I, I think it's a thought-provoking film. I mean, it makes you think, but it makes your hair stand up in the back of your neck. And what it is, is if you're looking for a popcorn film that you can just put on, watch, um, and then be just distracted, do other things, play, be on your phone, everything like this, it's probably not the film for you. This is one you actually have to watch. And there's going to be some times where you're going to go, man, this is a long shot. But when when it goes like this and it just stops and then all of a sudden something might move and then all of a sudden there's just a, something happens after the point where you think, oh, no. And then you're like, ah, uh, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, no. So I just think it's a, a, a movie that uh, it's it's disturbing and challenging and uh, it's really well made. Uh, it's all done on uh, film. It's got a gritty look to it. Uh, the performances by my, my co-stars, were, they were incredible. The director is so interesting. Everything was interesting for me on it. Even the pieces and the way they... The, the set direction and the 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 the, the uh, costumes, everything I just thought was spot on. Uh, just really a pre-pandemic film that looks like it was made because of the pandemic, which is amazing yeah. to me too. Absolutely, there you go. You heard it from the man, the legend himself, Casper. You're an absolute treat to talk to. I just love your enthusiasm and, and passion for all things relating to film and, and cinema. It just oozes and it's just infectious. And look, I gotta say next time you're in Australia, if you ever wanna have a beer and talk about films, I am your guy. As you can tell, I'm ready to talk about films any time of the week. But again, I really do thank you for your time. And we do sincerely wish you all the very best for Daughter, which is now available again on digital platforms in Australia and New Zealand. Guys, get on it. I really adore this film and I promise you, you're gonna love Casper and everything around this film. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you.